Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are doing well and having a good day. And also welcome to another episode, episode 14 of our YouTube app series tutorial. So we're gonna make this video short and sweet. So why don't we hop right into the simulator and let's talk about what we want to build today. All right, let's go ahead and run through the app that we built in the last episode that allows us to scroll between sections of our application just like the YouTube app on your iPhone right now. So the functionality that we want to build is to allow each one of these sections to actually get a different feed into our system by reaching out to the network and reaching for different JSON files from my current uh, YouTube assets folder. So in other words, I want to provide different sections like this. And currently our application only has one section or has multiple sections. It only reaches for the home feed inside of, let's see, feed cell. And it reaches for fetch videos here. And it reaches for my YouTube assets slash home.json. So I've set up a couple of different files called trending.json and subscriptions.json that will fetch to get a different feed in our simulator here. So uh, in addition to that, I wanna show you a couple of ways to uh, reduce code duplication in your project. So it's gonna help you also mitigate the chances that you can introduce bugs inside of your code as well. Now let's get started by running the project here from the last episode. Uh, make sure to watch the video for the uh, episode 13, I believe, should be available in the description below. Um, now that I have my project up and running, I need to actually use different cells for each one of these sections here. So they're all currently using this thing called a feed cell. If I go to home controller and look at setup collection view, we have this feed cell registered for each one of these sections. So if you actually take a look at what happens here, if I scroll down, it actually uh, has generates a new cell for this section. However, going to the next session, it actually uses the first cell right here. So we have to introduce new cells to prevent this type of behavior from occurring inside of a collection view. Now, the way to do that very easily is to go into my view group here, create a new file, and let's use iOS source Cocoa Touch class, and this will be a class called trending cell. And we'll subclass feed cell just like that and create our file and we get all this crap in here that we don't need so let's just delete that right off the bat and with this cell now let's see what I can do with this cell if I do uh, if I want to register this cell as this second cell here I can go to home controller and I will go to setup collection view and we need this line of code for trending cell. So let's type in collection view dot register class like so. This will be the trending cell dot self class. And here we need a trending cell ID, which doesn't exist now. So we'll create it up here right below. So let trending cell ID equals trending cell ID like that. So pretty good stuff. If I run the application now, nothing is going to change yet until I can go to my self or item at index path method. So everything looks the same. Now inside of here, if I check for the index path of uh, item equals one, we can actually return the trending cell instead. In other words, I can do if index path dot item equals one, remember this is zero and this is one, we will just return the collection view dot DQ with the cell identifier of trending cell ID and the index path uh, passed into this function right there. All right, and let's now run the application to see what this looks like. Okay, going there, there, and there. And this trending cell now is being returned right here. So I'm gonna show you that this is indeed working. Well, if I look at feed cell right here, I have this method that I can actually override called fetch videos right here. So I'm going to override that just to show you what that'll do. So override fetch videos. 
and we get this right here. So if I remove this function and uh, run the application, I am going to get a blank cell for this training cell. So this is entirely blank because I've overridden the functionality of fetch videos, which means that this is no longer being called inside of the training cell class. So that's kind of how we want to start off implementing a different feed for our training cell. Ah, green tea, it's pretty good stuff. Now, how do I go about implementing a different feed is the question. Well, if I go to Chrome here and I type in, let's see, I type in trending. So let me just show you how to get this URL here. Go to API service and take this entire URL. Let me just paste it up here. And instead of home, we will use trending. And that gets me this file down here, which I'll download. Prints out this entire JSON stuff here. If I just open it up, and if we go to, let's see, if I Google search JSON pretty print, gives me the first link here, paste all that JSON in here, and trending looks like this. All right, so instead of showing this blank screen right here, I wanna show what the trending feed looks like. And how do I do that inside of trending cell? Well, this is pretty easy as well. The trick is to actually introduce a different fetch function inside of API service. So here's what I'm gonna do. And I'm going to copy and paste all of this code. So an easy way to piss off uh, your boss and to uh, aggravate all your fellow computer uh, programmers is to copy and paste a bunch of code like what I just did. And uh, I'll show you guys how to fix this a little bit later on. So instead of fetch videos, we will call this fetch trending feed. That sounds like an appropriate name for this function here. And fetch trending feed will reach out to trending.json instead. And I can use this function now if I build this file. Instead of trending cell, I can use that call instead. So instead of this entire call, let me just copy and paste the original fetch videos function. I can call API service that shared instance that fetch trending feed instead. And inside of this completion block, we will do videos. So exactly like this, I'm just going to copy and paste all of this, paste it in there, and we are good to go. So I wanna run this now, and we're gonna see that this method gets executed whenever I tap into this trending. So trending, this gets fetched right there. And then upon completion, we set self.videos which is inside of the feed cell here. Remember, this is the actual uh, super cell. And we can actually hit the continue and the, fe the feed for trending just shows up just like that. Now, the way this works is when we subclass a, a certain file or a certain super class like this, this subclass gets all of the uh, functionalities of the original class. And uh, it's a aspect of object-oriented programming that some of you guys probably understand already. Um, if you don't understand uh, OOP, object-oriented programming, make sure to Google and do some research on it. And you'll kind of see how you can get a lot of advantages by subclassing uh, certain other classes like this. So that's the magic behind subclassing. Why don't we now uh, show you another example of subclassing? The, pretty much the same example, but instead for a subscription feed instead. So I can create a new file in here. So let's just do this one more time to make this entirely clear by creating a subscription cell like that. And let's just create, and we get this right here. So I am going to, let's see, overwrite fetch videos like that. And if I copy and paste all of this code in there, so instead of subscription, we're gonna to have to change this to a fetch subscription feed instead a little bit later. Um, instead of doing that right now, we will go back to home controller and register this subscription cell into our collection view like what we did <coughs> for trending cell. So here we'll say collection view, register class, and this will be subscription cell dot self. Some more T here. <clears throat> All right, and this string right here needs to be something of 
let's see, subscription cell ID. Sounds like a fitting name for this cell. <clears throat> so up above, let's create this cell by just pasting it up here. And now we can go down to uh, cell for item at, let's see, cell for item at next path here. We can just check if the index path, let's see, index path dot item, let's see, else if is the actual syntax, equals two, which is this index right here. We can return collection view dot dq, and the cell ID will be the subscription cell ID and the index path like usual right there. And now we can run this code. So whenever I tap on the subscription cell now, we'll see a different feed. All right, so trending goes here, and then subscription will now look exactly like trending because instead of subscription cell, we're fetching the trending feed instead. So let's go back to API service, and we're gonna copy and paste this chunk of code yet again. So this is already getting pretty gnarly here in terms of code duplication. So let's rename this third function, fetch subscription feed, okay? And instead of trending.json, I've set up a file called subscriptions.json, and we can run this, and uh, should still show the trending feed because I haven't changed this call yet. Let's just change that to that. And running the application, the subscription cell will now fetch the subscription feed. So Zootopia will be up there, and the subscription looks like this. So that's how you would introduce multiple feeds into your application, and you don't have to rewrite an entire cell. All you have to do is provide a method that fetches the actual videos, and you can override it in a subclass like this. So this is the magic um, behind subclassing that a lot of you guys should actually use to avoid code duplication. Now, the more interesting part of today's video is also this uh, code duplication that I've introduced inside of API service. So all these functions do exactly the same thing with the exception of this URL right here. So that means I can abstract this URL string out into a different, uh, into a parameter for this function. And I'm going to create this function fetch. Let's see, what is a good name for this function here? Fetch feed for URL string, taking a uh, URL string type string with this completion handler that this would need. So I'm gonna copy that right there. And the completion handler looks like that. Close off the brace right there. Now I will need to copy and paste all of this code yet again. So this is the third time I'm copy and pasting. And here, instead of using this URL right here, we are going to use this URL string from the parameter of this function. So now I have this all up and ready. I can copy this code right there, and I will comment out all of this and use that function call instead. And here we will use see string that right there url string in this case is actually this right here so i'm going to copy and paste that in there completion block will be this right here if we specify videos we can call completion with the videos array from my completion block and i'll show you a better way of doing this completion block in just a bit so now that i have that call i can remove all of this code here i'm running the application now we have this function that just calls this other function that is kind of the middleman um, in our code. So the subscription feed looks just like this, and we need to fetch uh, or fix the fetch trending feed just like what we did for subscription by copying and pasting. So I'm just going to paste all that code right there and use this trending JSON instead. So pasting all that in there as carefully as I can. And running this now, trending will look exactly the same, but we've reduced all that code duplication like that. And lastly, we will remove this code duplication by copying and pasting 
the home JSON, so I think I can just replace this by typing it in. That should be fine. And we can remove that. And here we go. We pretty much removed all the code duplication in terms of the JSON fetching. And all of our cells operate just like it did before. Now, one other, uh, one other tip I want to give you guys is to actually reduce the uh, duplication of this base URL as well. So I'm going to copy out this guy and let base URL equals this string here. And I'm going to use some string interpolation to replace that with base URL, which means that I can copy all that, paste that in here and in here. So the question is, why do I want to do this instead of just providing the raw string URL? The reason is, if I want to change the uh, base location of my API, I can just change it up here. And all of our code down here still should work, which means that the service that we are using should be interchangeable. And that's the benefit of doing this. All right, pretty good stuff. Now, earlier I was mentioning how you can actually do a better completion block instead of calling completion on videos. And the way to do that is to call this guy with the same string right there, the same string. And instead of using this completion block right here, I can actually just pass in this completion in there. And that reduces the need for actually calling the completion block. So I'll run that and it's gonna do the, exactly the same thing. So you see fetching home feed does that. So we can actually replace this right there. Let's see if I can do this correctly. If I can just hit a comma here and close that off. Let's see, and this just to be safe, I will paste the entire thing and replace this with subscriptions.json. So I think that looks pretty good. I'm gonna run this now and we will get the home feed, trending feed, and subscriptions like that. Now, let's see what else I can fix for you guys here. Okay, okay. So seeing, uh, taking a look at home controller itself or item at index path, I have this bit of code which looks pretty ugly in my opinion. And it looks ugly to me because we're calling this DQ function three times and passing an index path three times. So we can abstract that all away, which means I don't want to call this three times. And to do that, I'm going to actually abstract away the cell ID instead of creating a new function. So if I do this right here, let, so let cell ID be a type string, I can just do this. So instead of cell ID, I think ID or identifier would be a better name. And identifier is a string. And if the index is one, we can set identifier to be trending cell ID, comment that out and comment that out. If the index is two, identifier is, let's see, subscription cell ID. And finally, else, uh, identifier is equal to this last one on the line below, which is down here, cell ID. And then we can actually call identifier instead of the cell ID. So this means I've taken away all those dequeuing calls, which now makes our code a lot cleaner. And, uh, you know, less code means less uh, less chance of bugs being introduced in your code later on. So it still looks the same and everything is working. All right, and what else can I do inside of API service? Well, I actually want to reduce all of this as well. What if I told you I can change all of this code into roughly four to five lines starting from here to here? I can reduce all this to, let's say five lines at, at, the, at the minimum. I can do all this code, this JSON parsing, 
that ticks in the dictionaries inside of our feed. And I can take all this and just use a couple of lines and uh, I'll get the exact same effect as executing all of this. So that's kind of the next video. It's very interesting and it's one of my favorite things to do. And uh, in other words, I like refactoring my code so that we eliminate all the unnecessary lines and the possible bugs that we might introduce in our code in the future. All right, make sure to hit that like button if you enjoyed today's video content. Also hit that subscribe button. It really does help me out. It helps out the community that we're trying to create here. Bye guys, I'll see you next time.